Hello, Danny Dwarf here, and today I'm going to talk about honesty and dishonesty and kids lying to their parents and parents lying to their kids and uh, relationships, that sort of thing. So, and I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just going to share my philosophy and what I do. And you can agree with it or you can disagree with it. And I'd love to hear your feedback and your opinion. Um, so anyway, without further ado, uh, I believe that I should be 100% honest with my kids and my wife and other people in my life, all the peaceful people in my life specifically. Why and why do I think this is so important? Why is this worth a video? Because it's my relationship with my kids. It's one of the most important relationships in my life. It's my relationship with my wife. It's about trust. Your kids follow your example. So if you lie to your kids, let me rephrase that. If I lie to my kids, I'm not telling you how, what to do. If I lie to my kids, I believe they're more likely to lie to me because I believe they follow my example. And they're not always going to follow my example. They're going to do things that I don't do. But I do think they're going to adopt a lot of my behaviors because that's what I see in, in almost every family I've I come across. So my kids follow my example. So I try to be open and honest with them so that they're open and honest with me. I believe one single lie will destroy trust. So I, I will never tell a lie to my kids or my wife. All it takes is one lie. If someone lies to you, once, obviously, they thought it was okay to lie to you that one time. So it's not a big stretch to think that they will probably think at some point in the future that it's okay to lie to you again. So because of that, you can never really fully trust what they say. You can't know whether or not it's something they actually believe or it's something they're just saying for some reason. One lie is too many, in my opinion. I also believe it's very important to be a completely open and honest with your kid so they're completely open, open and honest with you, hopefully. Um, and this is how you stay informed as a parent. I've heard many stories, horror stories, about really good parents and really good kids. And the, the kids got into trouble. They got into drugs or they got into the wrong crowd or some risky behavior and the parents were completely oblivious to what was going on. Even though they were very involved in the kid's life, they had a stable home, a happy home. Still, kids can get in really bad trouble. The best source of information about what's going on in your kid's life is your child. So that's another good reason to be totally honest with your kids so they're more likely to be honest with you so that you can have more information. And this relates to business in general and uh, just groups of people in general it's important to be informed it's important to have good communication like imagine if you're a businessman and there's a little problem that arises you want to handle it immediately you want to know about it immediately and you want to handle it while it's a little problem because if you don't handle it then it can grow into a very big problem and and this is something that um, whenever I hire someone to do some work um, this is one of those expectations I go over with them because uh, it's how you uh, take care of problems while they're small. So anyway, uh, the same kind of rule applies to your relationship with your kids, and um, it's how you keep your kids out of trouble. It's how you solve your child's, or you help your child solve their problems while they're small problems instead of waiting until they're big and unsolvable. It's also a show of respect. It's a show of maturity. It's a show of, um, of love to be honest with your kid. It's also less stressful. Lying is difficult for me. I would much rather tell the truth all the time. That way I never have to think twice about what I'm saying. Is it true? Is it consistent with a lie I told earlier? That just seems like a big old headache and a bunch of stress I don't want to deal with. So it's the easy way, I swear. It's easier to be honest than to lie. And I know some people are very good at it. I'm not, and I never want to be. <laughs> Ethics. It's an ethical principle of my own um, that I have chosen to adopt. And so since I recommend that, you know, this 100% honesty with peaceful people, um, I don't want to violate that. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I want to have integrity. 
I want to be able to sleep well at night. So it's my ethical principle, and uh, that's why I practice it with my kids and my wife and everyone I deal with. Because I also believe that ethical principles should be consistent, um, consistently applied to every human interaction. Um, so if there are exceptions to your rule, then you need to clearly define those exceptions. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about exceptions in a, later on. Strengthens relationships. So yeah, I want a very good relationship with my kids. So I believe honesty is something that strengthens your relationship. It strengthens your trust. It uh, prevents resentment between, uh, you know, from your kid toward you because of things you told them that weren't true. Being honest can upset people. So I might tell them what I really believe and it might upset them and they might hold some resentment against me for a while. But in the long run, I think it will, it will strengthen relationship and it will reduce resentment over the long term. You know, if I tell someone, if my if a daughter asks me if um, she can, you know, take my car out when she's a teenager and I say no, um, and I tell her why, she might resent me for that, but at least I'm maintaining the trust in the relationship. So there you go. Now I'm going to talk about how I am honest with the people in my life. What does honesty mean? It means never saying something you don't believe. And that is my goal. Um, so I don't lie to my kids. I don't lie to my wife ever. And I don't exaggerate. Exaggeration is a stretching of the truth and it's a conscious stretching of the truth. So I consider it a lie. So I don't do that. Or I try not to do it. If you realize something you just said might not be true, Correct the misstatement immediately. Like I just said a moment ago, I said, uh, I was talking about exaggeration. I said, I don't do that. And then I corrected myself and I said, I try not to do that. That's an example. It's, you know, when you say something that you believe in the moment and then you realize while you're saying it or just after you said it, that's not entirely true. Um, you just correct the statement right away as soon as you realize it. Avoid absolutes. Oh, I'm not going to say avoid absolutes. I'm going to say be careful when you use absolutes. Words like all, every, everyone, none, no one, always, never. These are extreme situations. Often sentences that include these words are not entirely accurate. So I, I'm very careful. When, I try to be careful when I use those words. Superlatives are another batch of words that can be problematic if you're trying to be 100% honest. Uh, words like greatest, best, most, least, worst, and words that end in est, like tallest, smallest. Um, again, these are the extremes and um, often unlikely to be 100% true statements. So just I'm trying to, I try to be careful when using superlatives as well. Uh, now, in terms of always telling what you believe and telling the truth, there are, in my mind, two very specific exceptions that I make for that rule. And uh, number one is when I'm kidding around, when I'm joking around and I'm playing a prank on somebody. The first exception is when I'm kidding, when I'm joking around, when I, I'm, you know, I tell my daughter, oh my God, I was so hungry, I ate all your cookies. And I'm like, I'm just kidding, buddy. As you notice, I say, I'm just kidding immediately after I tell the untrue statement. Because if I don't tell them I'm kidding right away, then they can never be sure whether I'm telling the truth or when I, whether I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't let a prank last, certainly not for days, certainly not for hours, not even for minutes. I tell them within seconds that I was kidding, usually at the end of my sentence, as if it's a punctuation mark, you know, just kidding, just joking around, bud. And the other exception is lying as a last resort to defend peaceful people against aggressors. So this is an ethical thing. It is completely ethical and actually beneficial and preferable to lie to a person that is attempting to commit aggression against peaceful people. So, for example, if someone comes to your home and they say, where's your family? I want to hurt them. You tell them they're not here. You know, you got the wrong house. You, 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 you know, perfectly ethically acceptable to lie in that situation. And that's a very specific situation. So the only people I lie to are aggressors. And the only reason I lie to them is because I have to, to protect innocent, peaceful people. Otherwise, 
I try to tell the truth. So once again, to be honest, the idea is to, to say things you actually believe. Does that mean you need to share everything on your mind? No. Okay, that is not a requirement for being honest. You do not have to share every little feeling you have or every little idea that pops into your head or every little opinion you have about everything. Not necessary. In fact, it would be very annoying <laughs> if, you, if I did that because I would be a chatterbox. I'd be talking constantly because there's always things going through my mind. And I don't think people want to be around a chatterbox. Um, people, you know, like their peace and quiet and their rests in between, you know, in conversations. You know, it's also there's certain information that is just, you know, people don't want to hear about it. <laughs> you know, like things that go on in the bathroom. People do not, do not want to hear about that. So how do you determine what to share, what to, you know, what to say, what to talk about and what not to talk about? Well, since it's not a requirement for ethics or for being honest, uh, you can pick and choose what to talk about. If something is going to be beneficial to you and the people you care about, then by all means, share it. Um, in fact, you probably should. If it's going to be harmful in some way to the people you care about or to yourself, then just bite your lip. You know, you don't have to share it. Now, the one exception to that rule is if someone asks, asks me a direct question. If someone asks me a direct question and I know my answer is going to hurt their feelings. But if that's the case, uh, too bad. I'm going to tell you what I really think. <laughs> okay. If, if someone asks me a direct question, I will tell them what I believe. I'll be completely honest and I will share my opinion with them. I won't keep it to myself because they asked me the question. And quickly, I think they probably will learn that um, if they don't want to hear my honest opinion, then they really should not ask me a direct question because I will answer it, you know. Um, on the other hand, since I'm consistent with that, they know I'm someone they can, uh, they can get true information from, you know, true feedback from. So in that sense, you make yourself uh, kind of a rare commodity because I think there's a lot of people, um, my guess is that most people um, do tell people what they want to hear. Um, just from my observations. I used to be like that. No such thing as a white lie. Arbitrary, okay, so I believe a white lie is, the term white lie is just an arbitrary label that people use to justify lies that they want to tell. I know, I guess, I guess the strict definition of a white lie is probably something like a lie that is harmless, that doesn't cause harm, a lie that you say in order to make people feel better or to avoid hurting someone's feelings. I don't buy those arguments. I think a lie is a lie. Every lie violates trust. So that's it. Hopefully I didn't ramble on too long. I would love to hear your opinion on this. Um, this is a very important topic. This is how we keep our kids out of danger. This is how we stay informed as parents. This is how we model the kind of behavior we want to see our kids adopt. You know, this is how our kids can become honest. Um, and to, you know, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to title this. I might entitle this video why your kids lie to you or something like that which is would be very arrogant of me to say because i don't know your kids but it might be a you know an attractive title so anyway to address that issue i'm just going to say it i think if you're dishonest with your kids they will be dishonest with you and the reason kids lie is because their parents lie that's what i believe and it, and it applies to everything. And I know most parents will lie to their kids about all sorts of things, but like a common thing is like holiday characters and holiday stories. And I talk to my kids about that. I tell them what I believe. I tell them I believe these are characters in a story. And this is kind of a game that people play. And it's kind of, you know, people pretend that there is this character that visits our house and he does these things or she does these things or whatever, whoever we're talking about. And um, I tell my kids what I believe. I will not lie to them. I will never compromise on that. And it has upset some of my relatives that I do that. But but uh, it's funny because my daughter doesn't, like when I first told my daughter that, that I didn't believe in this specific character I'm not going to mention, um, she didn't believe me. You know, she just went on believing in the character as if he was real. So it's funny. Your kid is going to believe what he wants, to, what she wants to believe. And that's fine. And I tell And I tell my daughter, after I tell her what I believe, I tell her, you know, you know, you're going to have to figure out what you believe and other people believe other things. And so uh, let me know uh, what you think about honesty, um, being 100 percent honest, um, 
you know, about, you know, how it relates to parenting. And uh, if you try being honest with your kids, let me know how it goes. Now, I could say with uh, 100% honesty that I've never lied to my kids because I realized um, I didn't want to lie to my kids before they were born. So I've been this way their whole life. Now, if I was a parent that had lied to my kids about, you know, little white lies about this or that, and I decided I want to adopt this 100% honesty um, philosophy, then I would basically sit them down. Well, first of all, I'd tell them why my feelings have changed about honesty. And then I'd make a commitment. I'd, I'd actually probably put it in writing and give it to them and say, from this point on, I will never, ever lie to you under any circumstances. Um, and these are the only two exceptions, you know, the kidding and the defending innocent people from aggression. And, uh, and, and I'd make the commitment and I'd stick to it. That's what I would do if I was a parent who had lied to my kid before. And I think that if you do that, you, you might have a chance of earning their complete trust. If you are 100% consistent from that point on. I would love to hear your feedback on, the, on this topic. If you like what, this whole philosophy about being honest, try it with your kids. It's really radical. It's very rare. Most people lie often. You know, It's a major behavioral change. So if you decide to to adopt this behavior, then let me know how it goes. Thanks for listening. And if you uh, enjoy these conversations and uh, this kind of family-related material, subscribe. More coming to you.